All right, hi everyone. We are here for a Wolfram Language Design Review for 13.3, and our subject is calculus and algebra. So, oh, this is exciting. All right, long awaited. Right. Cool. Okay, let's take a look. Align integrate. Actually, I think it's better to go to the page itself. Okay. So not. So what will be the traditional? Yeah, I don't even understand what any of this is. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Um. I like these illustrations we're getting. So Roger and Tim, beautiful work. Um, so uh, two really different cases. Just the scalar, you know, line integral is already there in integrate. The, but you can't do the vector case because we've, you know, the way that that integral is defined is to integrate each component separately. And so you want to treat vectors differently. Right. So, okay, hold on. The first thing, if I just say, I see, if that curve is an XY space, I can just say perfectly well, I mean, for example, I could just say something like integrate, um, you know, x squared plus y to the fourth x y over a circle for example yeah, right and that's just fine yep the issue is that if i want to integrate a vector function over the surf over the circle i mean i hope that we're not sort of standing on our heads to avoid having to introduce something that will anyway have to introduce one day no. So the, the, I mean, integrate the vector there, just use integrate on a vector and it will perfectly come up with a vector. So for instance, a centroid yeah. is an example of that, where you really want the listability. That's the correct definition. I see. So you're saying if I say integrate x, y. Yeah. Well, particularly uninteresting in this case, because yeah, the yeah, centroid yeah. is in there. Yeah, right. But that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Okay. As opposed to You've got the tangent vector. You, you're going along the curve, looking at the tangent. Yes. Right? Yeah. And that's kind of basically projecting you onto the tangent. And so you see what component of your vector is in the tangent direction. So think about integrate. They're yeah. usually called work integrals, right? Where you integrate up, kind of work along a path. Well, they usually called path integrals. That's another name, yeah. And, okay, I understand what this is doing. Um, you should mention path integrals, even though path integral also means a different thing. Um, Mm, that's an interesting can of worms. Yeah. The default orientation. Yeah. This is really, it's, <laughs> in general, it means that you have another vector field defined on the region. Yeah. Okay. By the way, is there an N version of this? Does there need to be? There, there, there will be in next, in 14. Okay. Yeah, it's there underneath the surface. You can call it, but we didn't expose it because we didn't know whether it's worth doing right now. It's it's being used internally. If you say working position goes to something, it'll call N line integrate, basically. Okay. And N surface and N contour integrate. So it's all possible to verify numerically and use N integrate, basically.
Okay. All right. Contour, I mean, surface integrals. Again, I think the page is probably the best to go to. And where do we get volume integrals? It, it, it's already there in integrate. And we have volume, yeah. I see. So like in the case of line integrate, the scalar case is already there in integrate. OK. Um, and the same thing you know, here. Can, can I make a documentation suggestion? I think you should not document that first, because I think it's confusing. What, what is confusing? To document the scalar case first. I think oh. you should document the vector case first, because that's why you'd use this function. Yeah. It's not but, even obvious you should document the scalar case. Well, I tend to agree with you, because it, it, it is basically, it is a complication. Because it's, it looks, it literally is like two different functions. But I think the Vendra and so on would argue that, oh, but that's what people call it. That's what they want. Except people sometimes have, you know, many textbooks have different names for the scalar case and the vector case, right? So like a line integral is one is one case and the path integral is the other. Yes. Which one is what? Path is the scalar case, usually. Then just take the frigging scalar case out of the main documentation. Okay, no with that. Just have it say it works in the notes. Because people will assume, you know, they'll leave the braces off, it'll work, big deal. Because not, it's it's perfectly consistent, right? No. Um, no, I don't yes. think so. Well, it is consistent. It's just it well, there's no vector in general. There's no vector field that will reproduce that result, right? Um, right. It's not the same thing as just putting a brace around one component, right? Because the length of the vector must match the ambient dimension. Definitely. So how would you represent it? You'd have to have something representing the unit tangent vector. Yes. What a mess. Right, Take because, right, right. Because So, right, the scalar case is the integral of the scalar times the norm of the, per, you know, parameterized tangent, whereas the vector case is the integral of the dot product of the vector field with yeah. the parameterized tangent. Take it out. I really, I would take it out. I think it's super confusing. Okay, I know that, yeah. Um, so in this case, you know, we need a different vector field associated, uh, you know, on the surface, which is a normal vector field. So it only works for hypersurfaces. <clears throat> sorry, work I'm, in I'm sorry, you're talking about surface integrate. Yeah, surface integrate, no. Right. Okay. Okay. So, so the surface, but then then how do you define the normals to the surface? Well, that's so that, go that, go go yeah, okay. scroll. So that's no. the same deal as your direction defining here. Basically, yes. Go down there. Okay. Question. Question. Is it obvious that there shouldn't be some symbolic representation of the tangent vector? In other words, if uh, I want to find the unit tangent vector, okay. Here's a question. I want to find the tangent vector at some place on, so I've got my, my line that's defined by some, you know. Parameter. But here is the thing, in the region framework, we do not have, the region framework does not support oriented regions, okay? So okay. that's not even necessarily preserved in the transformations done by the region framework. And furthermore, if you need to define orientation in general for a k-dimensional thing in n-dimensional space, what you need to do is yeah. define an oriented vector space at each point, basically the tangent space. OK. And, but it's not clear where we need it. I mean, this is like Gibbsian vector calculus. It's like a little yeah. simpler. OK, but, but, but knowing how these things go, Eventually, we're going to need to define tangent spaces. Maybe, but then then there should be a use case that's strong enough. No, no, I that, understand that. that, I understand that, that. I'm just trying to do defensive design. So no, no, I, I, I've tried that too. You know, I, I was just, my, my super defensive mode is to only allow parametric regions. It's uncontroversial what it means. 
but I just think that the, the yeah, usability no, no, suffers. Yeah, right, right. But we, we want to have a default. For this. And so not all regions can be used at this time. And I hope the messages are reasonable. So this region cannot does not have a default orientation. Use one yeah, of those. We, we need to go okay, and check yeah. that. I'll, I'll check right. that, sure. Okay, but, but my point is that at some point in the future, there's probably going to be a symbolic representation of the tangent space. Yeah, so I think that they're, they're Which is possibly... fine, it, 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 sorry, it's just like your X, Y is an element of, you can have X, Y is an, it's not X, Y, but it's something else is an element of the tangent space. Maybe, but there's also sort of a use case of where you basically have some kind of vector field, matrix field, tensor field associated to the region. Yep. Think about sort of different materials, densities, you know, all kinds of things, right? Yep. But we don't have that at this point. And I don't think this is really like a tail at right this point of a dog. That um, part, the, the, the part we're just describing about explicit tangent. You know, yeah. Vector fields. Yeah. Right. I agree. I mean, this is important. What, what you're defining here is important because people have had to do this sort of by hand in the past. Yes. No, I think and, that this has a kind of clear use case, but but it's very limited what's needed. So when you're in a hypersurface, you can define the tangent space by a normal. You know, there are only two normals, you know, and so that defines the orientation of the tangent space, assuming, you know, our cross, um, our cross convention. Wait a second, wait a second. You're, you're talking about in a two-dimensional surface, yeah, or any space. n n minus one dimensional surface in N D. There is oh, a I see. I see. Like the hypersurfaces of a, like I'm sorry to be specific, but the space like hypersurfaces in general relativity yes. are three dimensional in three plus one dimensional space. Right, right. Okay. So your point is that the the wedge product or whatever gives you an ordinary vector-like thing if you have an n minus one dimensional or d minus one dimensional hypersurface. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I mean, then the cases of most interest are probably in, in two-dimensional surfaces in three-dimensional space and three-dimensional surfaces in three plus one dimensional space. Yeah, and for good measure, we support, you know, curves in 2D. Which are perfectly good hypersurfaces. Right. No, it's confusing to me. When you said hypersurface, you mean maximal dimension. I mean maximal, I don't know what they're called. I don't know what they what is their they're called hypersurfaces dimension? if they're dimension n minus one in oh, N. They're called hypersurfaces in uh, for other they, they called hypersurfaces of their dimension n minus two as well. I don't know if there's a special name for the case where there are one less hypersurfaces. Well, I think well. Uh, I, I would say that any reasonably modern treatment of differential geometry would say that, or geometry would say that a hypersurface is, is n minus one dimensions and embedded in n dimensions. Wow, fascinating! Really? Okay. Yes, I kind of agree. Funky. Okay. Well, I learned a new nomenclature feature. Okay. Um, all right, so here, so I mean, the surface normals obviously defined for purposes of lighting and things like that in other cases, right? Yes. And whatever we're doing here is consistent with the conventions we're using for defining normals for light. I mean, don't polygons get to have a special, a, a separate normal specified for purposes of lighting? Yes. And you're supporting that here, I hope. Not now. We could. So one use, one extremely useful case is that you have a bounded space and you think of the normal pointing outward from it. And if you want the opposite orientation, you put a minus sign for your expression. Yeah, for the thing you're integrating. Right. For the flux. Basically. Yes. Yes, yes, exactly. They're typically called flux integrals, right? Which, by the way, you should say, oh, you'd say that. Well, well of course. Um, <clears throat> and this plays nice with gradients of 
of scalar fields and things like that for making although no oh, I'm yeah it's a different thing okay never mind I'm thinking about um okay what do we need to do talk about here I mean so so obviously so I think uh, we I think we should still make them experimental Stephen yeah I agree because I think that this region support will you know will will uh, th this orientation that we define here I, I just I'm, I'm not super confident in it uh, what happens if you have a non-orientable surface what happens if you're doing this on a Klein bottle I mean it's fine if it's a parametric surface this this uh, surface integral is perfectly well defined on the coordinate charts or something yeah because it has a perfectly fine normal I see on, but because you can't make a single chart no, right well you can't do that and stay oriented consistently oriented right but the integral is perfectly fine not no, a problem. I understand, because it has coordinate system for that right cool lovely functions let's Thank go you. on to counter integrate and I would do the same there I would go to the actual page these are nice functions I mean how strong are they in terms of algorithms separate how, how much are they bureaucracy and how much are they actually new algorithms yeah so I think we also try all kind of tricks well quantum integrate is different but for the other, other ones we also try to let's say apply the divergence theorem to see if that helps um, we would try so there's there's a lot of layering of methods for all three and they've been tested against the, the stand textbooks stack exchange etc so in that sense we're putting I would say hundreds of huh? yeah I mean I think it's good but I'm not as confident yet you know but but I haven't stressed in myself enough and we try and make contact with the classical Which, theorems of vector analysis so right the good news Stephen is that they've been exposed to a lot of textbook material and yeah. math stack exchange not mathematica stack exchange yeah so both, kinds yeah, of things. yeah that's got many more questions coming in math stack exchange so it's in that sense it's kind of real world but i i um i assume that the wolf alpha folk will want to yeah use this. yes yeah. so it's so, driven uh, by yeah. them it was requ requ yeah, requested by them basically okay good looks lovely all right let's talk about contour of course. thank you um how do you define these contours oh god you've got named contours do we have like the Bromwich contour and things we can expand on this um a lot going forward if there's you know some so, some that should be there from which we might be one of those but there are more this is kind of a pretty long list potentially how do you visualize one of these things uh they're there in the in the examples i mean so uh, i mean so they're not too difficult to visualize but i mean they're they kind of to be thought of as infinitesimal basically those holes and all those keyholes and all that so under name contours special topic named contours i'm not sure they visualize that easily yeah it's not i would say yeah i, I agree we, we are to this one iconizing what the hell is this there's icon where they're getting visualized yeah okay that's not great there's going to be a way what's that yeah i'm guessing that's an epilogue there right yeah and that's yeah. not that, that's a hacker it's a hacker related you know way of visualizing i'm talking about you've got counter integrate and there should be a way of putting in complex plot something that says you know I don't know what you know contour I don't know what it is some option that basically says draw contours here just like you can say draw grid lines on a plot I think so you'd probably you'd, I think you'd probably want to call it like complex contour or something like that sure, right sure Cause... sure, sure. Um, right but then um, I mean okay so but they're kind of like a named special function if you like a named yeah. special contour take parameters and whatnot 
Right. Um, but I mean, if, if we have a style for complex contours, which we should, and it's not that one there, and it shouldn't mm -hmm. be, I mean, that's pretty ugly what's happening here. Yeah. Um, and, you know, what I would have thought is really you should think about it like grid lines. It's a, you know, it's mm -hmm. a way of making essentially canonical <laughs> markings in a contour, in a, in a complex plot. And the fact that it has named <sighs> things is like I think it it's 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 sort of, you know, complex plot doesn't plot curves at all. Um we don't have a complex contour plot, but we could probably have one. Um don't we? Yeah, I but, thought we we do have a com don't we have a complex contour plot that we just started using for visualizing things? Do we? Well, be that as it may, my argument is in a complex plot, a very common thing to want to do is just visualize, you know, a contour or two. And I think, you know, they should be elegantly visualized because they are, they are riding on top of another, you know, all sorts of options for the base complex plot. Uh, just like grid lines ride on top of things. I kind of I think that that doesn't make a lot of sense for this function. I think for its own to combine two plots would make sense. You know, one that's for curves and one that's for you know. All right. Okay. But but then the question is still a packaging problem, Stephen, which I'm thinking about. Sort of. You I know, don't think it will work, Roger. I don't think it'll work, and I'll tell you why. Because why? I think these little wiggle woggles around here. Okay. Mm -hmm. It depends on many things. This is really diagrammatic, right? Because that actually is a microscopic deviation there. Yes. Right? So this is really diagrammatic. This is not a plot a curve in the complex plane. This is a diagrammatically, it's like an axis annotation. Yeah, but it's but it really has complex plot has nothing to do with curves in its plot, particularly. I These know. Are, but I know, but what I'm saying is don't think of this as a curve. Think about it as a marking, like a grid line that indicates a region of the plot. Because I think, I, I just don't think, I think it's diagrammatic, not, you know, I mean, yes, you could imagine a contour that was carefully woven, but that's not what people are going to do typically. They're going to want a named contour that is just one of the standard semicircles avoiding poles, things like this. Yes, but that's what I'm thinking that we could have sort of in such a, you know, things that actually plots curves because okay. you don't necessarily want the function. The complex plot is for, it's always colors. That's the whole yeah, point of enough. complex okay, plot. So here's, here's, a, here's another analogy, okay? Like the disembodied axis functionality. Mm -hmm. but this is kind of a bit like that throw a disembodied, you know. Yes, you're thinking of concept. it like a new primitive type thing. Yeah. But it's, in, in, it's very expensive for us to add new primitives. I know. Um, you know, and most people really don't care. I mean. Well, I, I think it should be an option to complex plot because I think that's where it's always going to get used. <sighs> Hello? Oh, whoops. That seems like such incredibly hackery. Okay, well, well fine. I mean, the, the, I'm worried that if you just have it be a separate function. Um, no, I think it's interesting to plot curves in the complex plane irrespective. Okay. Yeah, I agree with you. You know, and so I, I you know, think that that's valuable irrespective. Um, and you don't always want all this, you know, complex plot background stuff. You know, often you don't care one bit. I mean, it's it's interesting that we can now do it. It's insightful and everything. But, but traditionally, people never did it because they only could do the curves. I understand. Uh, I think we need to think some more. But but I agree with you. We need an easier way. We need an easy way to visualize those. Right. We seem to have disconnected from our live stream audience. But anyway, we can um, 
these are also rather ugly. If you've got, can we get a little bit of graphic design on this, on these black? Things? Yeah, I mean, uh, right now it's using our graphics primitive and- Which and... is black. Well, I think given that we'll, I mean, I don't know, maybe, maybe Tim can do better, but right, given that these things, right, anytime you have a zero or a pole, you're going to use the entire rainbow in the background. I don't know that the black is, in fact, such a bad choice. Maybe it's slightly grayed. I don't know. Okay. So I, I know that I will try and do that. Okay. But we need to think, I mean, I really want to come up with a better scheme. This is like something that expands it into graphics, you know, or something, but it's just. Um, what happens, this is a physics moment. I mean, in, in um, uh, usually you have, you know, P squared minus I epsilon to specify in the function itself to specify the routing around a pole. Yes. Do we have a mechanism yeah. like that? In a way, that's what it's doing. The those happen, or they're kind of taking the epsilon into account and then setting them to zero. So you're kind of getting rid of the the singularity. If that's what you mean, I mean, you're going around it, but you're not hitting the infinity. Yes, I, 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 are you I, specifying sure at sort of at each? So are are you specifying at each point whether you're going above or below the singularity? I mean, yes. Okay. So how, if you read the specification in there. Um, like the included and excluded points. Yes, exactly. Either go above or below. Um, I think it's mildly unfortunate that there's no way to specify that in the function. In the function? Right. In physics, the common convention is that the function is 1 over p squared minus i epsilon. And then you're simply integrating on the real line. Right. But you could do that. Right. Well, well, which, takes, right, which takes you one above and one below, right? And you, you can use a minus sign to flip them. And then you'll add and subtract such combinations to when you want the, you know, the purely forward or purely backward propagator, um, as, as we say in the physics land. So, I mean, it's a little... I mean, right, you'd need a, a special, right, you'd need a special variable, uh, a way to specify which variable is epsilon and then some canonical way to decompose the input. I'm not sure that's actually going to be more useful and or easier in practice. Yeah, I think, but I just think it's worth looking at that physics convention because I mean, these things where it's sort of a, You know, I'm not thrilled with these things where kind of like it almost feels like they should turn into associations and then it's, you know, more complicated stuff. Um, let's see. Um, and, and I, you know, for something like an inverse Laplace transform, don't you need the Bromwich contour thing, which goes yes. to infinity? But that's easy because you can just, just use a, a vertical line for that infinite line. We could document that separately, but we have talking. examples where we just call in. I mean, to be honest with you, sometimes we just find the inverse Laplace transform so optimized for those that we might even call it internally. Because if you got exactly right, yeah, contour, I, I got it. I got it. Yeah. So you got a rational function. You'd never get anywhere with, uh, you know, kind of uh, a non built in method. Right. So, yes. I don't understand. This upper semicircle, how far does it go? Does it go to infinity in both directions? Yes. yes. Essentially, yes. Yes. So it's capital R goes to infinity and epsilon goes to zero kind of thing. But so why are these pictures? showing this is why I'm telling you, you have to have something which is just kind of a marker, like an axis, 
because this is really going to infinity. You can't actually draw it. See what I'm saying? Okay. Okay, but you see my point, that this really isn't going to infinity. Yeah. It's really yeah. a decoration. It's, it is a decoration. Right, which is why I think it should be part of the complex plot story, not part of a separate thing. Because if it's part of a separate thing, you have to specify, you know, if you change the range of the, of the complex plot, you're going to, you know, mess up the decoration. I really think that we need to think some more about that, but okay, I, I, I kind of, yeah. Fine. I mean, I think we can plot to infinity for complex plot, but how the heck you do, you know, epilogue on complex plot with infinities? Oh, that's well, I don't gonna think be... you want a good plot to infinity because it's the upper half circle. Um, and maybe you know, you'd want it to become dashed at some point or something, right? To suggest that it's, I know. Or, I think I, we I, have to. I think yeah, we I have to think explore. Gonna, some... Yeah, I don't think we're going to solve it right now. <laughs> I agree with Roger. We're not going to instantaneously solve this problem. Okay, yeah. fair enough. All right. I'm arguing for this being a decoration, but I might be wrong. Okay, let's look I think at the we have to come back to that. Okay, fine. Okay, so we can trivially verify, yes, here we go. Cool. That's the first example. <laughs> yes. Um, and, uh, yeah, very nice. Yeah, we've gone to all lengths to test all the two or three full textbooks, match okay, exchange. So for example, if I do the following, mm -hmm. if I say, this thing, if I just do one over Z. Uh, you might need to define reg. That's I'm going yeah. to, I'm going to not Sorry. About it. And, uh, why do you do it like this? Why don't you just say Z element of regular polygon? You're not using reg a second time. Okay, I noted that. But please don't do that. I mean, it's just- Well, fine. he might be using it in the, in the icon, uh, yeah. which but is a different you, problem. We <laughs> need to, I mean, I, look, so do, by all means, tell us when you find something, but I haven't worked uh, through the examples. Crash. Just the crashed. examples need some. It just crashed. Oh, great. It just crashed. What version? Uh, okay, let me do my. That's pretty fresh. It's about as fresh as I have. I crashed. I tried yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the, the danger of using the prototype build. Well, also, it's my my perfect, you know, divining rod, so to speak. Exactly. I bet if I try it with the Pentagon, it won't crash. <laughs> oh. Ah, it crashed. Oh, I got it crashed, too. Yeah. yeah, okay. All right, fine. Branch cuts. What on earth do we do with branch cuts? Well, actually, the see, if you think about the counter integral, Integral is just a real integral in some sense. So you can always, in the end, use integrate. I mean, it's because our branch cuts are set, they are defined, predefined. I see. I mean, the thing is, we think of the contour integral as being the complex, pair, but really it's just a, like a Riemann still there's a lot of integral. So in the worst case, we just do that, but Fine. that seems to help, oh yeah. Also, <clears throat> contours don't need to be closed at all. A contour integral is perfectly well defined for an open contour. Yep. It's also perfectly well defined for a non meromorphic function. Yes. Essential singularities and all kinds of things. Sir Stephen, it, it's just, you, just, just no residue theorem. Yes. Yeah, no, no, I understand. I understand. So, that's per and also underneath it, we use the n contour integrate. So, we have kind of some consistency between integrate and integrate when you have inexact input. So we can check things. That's cool. Very nice. So does, I'm sorry, does it have, is it just using Cauchy's theorem? You know, if it notices, like in this case, does it just check to see whether the pole is inside the region? Yes. And it will use residue sum, which we introduced some time ago. And yep. that will use residue. So basically we are built up from residue to residue sum, residue sum to contour integrate. So it's just layer on layer building up. 
and the orientation is provided by the Cauchy theorem because that only holds if your counters oriented correctly. So in a way, we have escaped in that case. We don't need orientation at all. What? Because your residue theorem only works if you you're doing some of residues, right? But sure, that will only work if the contour integration is kind of correct. So we almost by default we get the correct orientation for the meromorphic case. Wait a minute. So you're saying every contour is counterclockwise in some sense? Well, yes, that's correct. I for think the the, the, no, I no. There's things you haven't thought through here. There are complicated poly. You can define polygons which have very different orientation rules than Cauchy's rules for what's inside and what's not. So what happens with a bow tie? Well, I mean, it should be. Well, you, we, if you if you just give a line that is a bow tie, it will do the right should do the right thing. Okay. By the way, these these lines don't look very counterclockwise up at the top here. No, th those are curves which has. You see that it, it describes what the default orientation is depending on parametrization. Oh, I see. This is the part I'm less, you know, that's why I'm a bit. Um... Right, so, okay. So a contour integral usually is around a contour, but for a region, you are assuming it's around the boundary of the region or boundaries, as, plural. As yeah. a convenience, because it's good for user, good for us to allow that. Because we don't have right. as many and Roger curves. is concerned about whether that's consistent. Yes, I, I agree with him totally, absolutely. Okay, fine. I, so you guys will look at it. But, but these cases, these named cases, are clearly okay. And yes. You can put discs in different places and things like that. Yeah, and if you want the opposite orientation, you use a minus sign for your integrand. Yeah, if you want it for all of them. But what if you want some it rotating around you well know, you can always patch to, you can, okay so you can always give a bunch of curves right there's always a workaround it might not be as convenient as you want it but there's well, always how is a the counterclockwise how is the clockwise circle specified but we, mean, we as an, don't as a, change the orientation of the curve you if you want to do integrate clockwise around a circle you put a minus sign around your function no i understand that but if you have some positive rotating you know some circles that you want to rotate you know some poles you want to go around positively some you want to go around negatively i don't know whether you ever want to do that yeah i've never wanted to do that that i can remember we have thought of a direction option but it just looks too risky and i totally agree roger that it's not worth going to right now what you've covered is kind of the, the ground enough we have broken right. it through the next layoffs complex analysis you like you know that's all fine that's I also good. looking forward to sort of hear back from people. I think that this makes them, I think that they address a lot of use cases and I'm sure users are going to tell us we like this too. And we would like to hear from them. Yeah. All right. Fine. Achieving Oberhettinger. Yes. So Oberhettinger was a junior kid on the Bateman project. Well, kid, I mean, right. PhD. Um, wasn't and but Magnus he Oberhettinger and Sony, that was the people who did the um, I remember that right, oh. right. But Oberhettinger went on to spend the rest of his life on integral transforms, <laughs> okay, okay, fine. And he wrote so, a bunch more on that. So he was, you know, there was only two volumes of integral transforms in the Bateman project, so <laughs> he wanted to do it right. <laughs> cool. I don't really know a characterization of what's different between, you know, doing integrals in general and doing integral transforms, as in, are there radically different methods for doing integral transforms as compared to generic integrals? One thing we use quite a lot over years to verify, particularly is things like series coefficient and sum. So you try and work out the series coefficient for something and then you you try and uh, find the integral of that and then sum it. So that seems to be one okay. technique. So, I mean, there are, there are, the techniques are much deeper because it's more special class. And Oberettinger is just a very difficult collection. So it took some time to check things. So we are on the, uh, just doing a very final check and we'll have everything out for the release, but yeah. Okay, did we fix this horrifying thing about these stupid things where, God, this drives me crazy. This. Oh, you now have Itai here. 
why don't you guys talk we, amongst each other for so, a while? So, <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I believe we came up with a design about a year ago, and we we need to find somebody to actually implement said design. Um, maybe maybe when Carlo is done with the with the audio GUI, he he could do this. Or I, I think it's really uh, no, no, no. Okay. Let's figure out how to get it done. We really okay. need to get it done. Okay. Whatever that did, by the way, was incredibly weird. Of um, what did yeah. what do? Oh, it, it had some crazy thing that said formatting. I was I I just copied that and it went into a conniption for a while. Hmm. Could be prototype built. Yeah, it could be. Okay, but so what you've done here is dramatically simplified, I see, generalized Fibonacci-like things. No, so the, the general class is a constant coefficient single equations or constant coefficient systems of equations okay. within home, you know, in the inhomogeneous case in particular is what has oh. huge improvement. And that, sad to say, but it wouldn't surprise me if that's 90% of what people use. Right. Okay, nice. Okay, should we move on to algebra? Okay. Very nice work on calculus there. Thank you. Okay, algebra, finite fields, long awaited. Okay, shall I look at the guide page? Let's just see what we've got here. Um, I would go to the finite field reference page. As you can go to the guide page too, but the finite field reference page is one I feel I've worked through a lot. Wow, I haven't seen this iteration of the page yet. That looks really pretty. <laughs> hmm? No. What happened there? Oh, crap. Oh, no, no, nothing. No, nothing. That's just future. This. The futurized stuff is literally future. So in the next release, finite the the um the general prime power fields will be supported in the linear algebra and the solvers as well. Right now it's supported in the polynomial functions beyond the arithmetic. I assume finite field just of P gives GFP. Adam, do you have to give one or just uh, the... no you have to Give one. I, well, yeah, we can. We can. We can make yeah, the, please yeah, the fourth one. Field of P, just work because that's going to be GF two is really common. Oh, okay. Right. All right. Let's see how this is supposed to work. We've had designs for this at different times over the last thirty-five years. That's a bit funky, if I might say so. Where that is what? Oh, the appearance of these things. OK. Oh, please don't make there have to be a one there. That's really goofy. Sorry. I think it would also be nice, isn't it? I mean, don't doesn't one always say GF such and such? Or does one not? Did. <laughs> There's a, yes, he both, did. Both, both those standards exist, Stephen. And I, I think people have moved on to call them finite fields in general, more often than than okay. Galois fields. All right. But I mean, if one was writing it as a field, one would say, what well, one would say F sub five or one would say GF five here. F sub five. Then why isn't that what this shows? F sub five, rather than this whole bloggle thing here. Why don't we have something where, where fundamentally it looks more like the math notation? I see. Well, I mean, it, uh, right. I mean, in, in a typical case, 
I suppose this isn't necessarily a blocker, but right in the typical case, right, the characteristic is not five, it's, you know, something with 500,000 digits or some such, or at least 500 digits. Um, and, you know, it seems a bit more natural to start abbrevi abbreviating such things in a summary box than in a in something that just looks like F of subscript. But well, fair I, enough. I, I agree, but I don't. I think what what I'm suggesting is that the, what this looks like is maybe finite field, and then what's what appears here is F superscript five or F sub five or whatever it is, and then it can be F sub five dot 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 whatever. Just so visually, you see finite field. Okay, great. You know roughly what it is. Oh, that's the F you're talking about. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's an easy fix. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, and then you could leave off all this stuff here, and you could put that under the plus sign. Just say finite field plus, and then this just. Oh, so then the whole thing is a little smaller. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, okay. Don't you think? Don't you think it? Act? I mean, that's that's it's just changing the, the 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 graphic will adapt to its object. Right. right. Yeah, I, I don't think we have any precedent for just the icon with no i know we don't i'm just so, I'm sorry about that but i mean i think that's i think it's a would be a good thing to do here because there is a standard math notation which you might as well use okay i can i'll well i will i will play around with it okay, uh right. I, I i won't uh, i won't promise that this is instantly implementable yeah, all right, okay, fine <laughs> Okay, but obviously you should have lied it if there are lots of digits in the five, so to speak. Right, and I don't know if there are any examples here, but you know, I certainly tested it with you know hundreds of digits and 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 whatnot. So, yeah, there, there are some on the fire field page. There are some examples with long primes. No, come on, you come, want... on come on, please, please, let's have a proper uh, message here. A prime. Uh, yeah, that's what's that wrong strange. with. Oh, it's it's a strange one. You should 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 say it's not a prime. I I, I guess, yeah, that might, must be a typo somewhere. It just <laughs> looks like a wrong message. And what's that I doing there? Is that that I? No, the that I that's blue? the link to the to the. No, I know, I know, I know. But why is it blue? Because that's the color you picked after <laughs> looking at multiple yeah. options. Okay. Okay. Fine. I, I believe. <laughs> By the way, I just want to remind you that because we're now feeding error messages back to LLMs, they matter more. And there's, yeah, and there's clearly some build issue there because of the pinking yeah, see, there. So, right. I'm just, I'm just commenting that that error messages, the text of error messages, is being fed back to LLMs when evaluation fails. Right. Mm -hmm. So. For it to know that it's not a prime is very useful to it, not only to the humans, but to the, to the AIs as well. Okay, so anyway, this is, I don't know, is 501 a prime? I have no idea. Just do next prime of 500 or, or prime of 500. <laughs> okay, great. All right, there we go. Okay, so now I'm saying this number is the fifth element of that, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And I don't understand when you go, naive question, if I do the this field here, uh, okay, super naive question. Oh, look at that. I mean, you, you're doing exactly this 503. I don't even yep. know what that, what, what would that, how would that be notated as an F thing? How do you notate? I mean, when it's GF, it's GF five hundred three cubed, right? But oh, what would it be? F sub, in, in, you know, F, F, to, F sub p to the power d. It's usually that's yeah. why. You, you okay, know, okay, works. fine. So it looks just like this. Okay. Yeah. I think. Okay. Question: How do you number the elements? Which is the fifth element, so to speak? And uh, so, so these are digits in a system. Uh, in in a system mod p, so or in in the base p. So, well, so the, well, right. There are two possible numberings to, because there's yeah, the uh, polynomial and exponential. So, right, so the, if, if you look the here, Stephen, would be, zero and one are special. 
And then the enumeration is given below for the two representations. Boy, that's a new thing. I mean, I do think structuring these these detail sections is a reasonable idea. Yeah. But I think you need subsections here. Yeah, I was trying to avoid that because we don't have it. Yeah, I know, but I think we're going to have to have it. Um. So, so you're telling me, okay, for for GFP, these are both equivalents, and they just number the integers, correct? Yes. Okay, but when it's a prime power field, then these are two different representations. Oh no, actually, there, there, there are different representations for 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 prime fields too. Why? How? I mean, so but oh, the, the, the first one obvious is canonical representation. Go ahead. So, the first one is is, is the natural numerical representation, the polynomial, and the the exponential would be exponents of a primitive element or exponents of a primitive element minus one, actually. To, so well, I understand. If the primitive element is just, you know, oh, exponentials of a primitive element. Exponential. So the primitive element modulo of five would be like two. Yeah. I and guess. these are powers of two minus one. Okay. So if I was just doing this, And by the way, I mean, in, in, you know, we have all these cases, like, I don't know, shift register sequences or something where we want to have things. Well, I don't know, that may not be a good example, but, but how do I get this and unpack it? What happens if I say normal of that? No, what, what do you mean unpack it? Well, I want the integer out. I want the, at least for the case of GFP, I want to be able to get the integer out. How do right. I do so, that? Uh, so for for the GFP, you you, you just say uh, that uh, or information of that index or that mm. and and the property index. Oh, yeah. Right. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Do, do, I know the finite fields have subvalues. What about the finite field elements? Do they have string subvalues? Yeah, so so the finite field elements have string subvalues. Fields actually don't because because they make elements that way. Because they make elements, yeah. So how would I find the the characteristic? I'll I mean, say character. Say characteristic, and you will get characteristic uh, property. Or some information, yeah. or uh, oh, for the field, for the field, yeah. you you have to have information field comma characteristic. Okay, but if I just say, is that is the form that I think it's in? Yeah, it is. It is. This is just an appearance of this, right? So if I say input form percent one. Oh, that's what it is. Because it computed a it, it computed yeah, the, the, yeah. an irreducible polynomial for you. Yeah. Okay. 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 So now, if I take this thing here, and with some precedence. Okay, so if I if I wanted to know what is it, the multiplicative order, what do we what do we call that multiplicative order? Multiplicative order. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Oh no, wait a minute. What did it just do? I should be able to say what's the multiplicative order of that element in that finite field. Is that not correct? Yeah, it it knows the finite field, so you don't have to give the the finite field. Finite field is inside the element. 
I understand, but so it shouldn't be giving that carrot either. Right. Well, until I we uh, it's, right it's, until, until we add a single argument usage to the ref page and defuturize it. Right. That that's where that carrot is no, coming I, from. I know. That's where, uh, <laughs> I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. I'm just saying we should eat the carrot, so to speak, or whatever one does. Yes. I mean, okay. But I like the fact that it works for the multiplicative order here. So. What other kinds of functions work on this? So I assume I can have these as coefficients in a, um, so if I say, you know, factor, that's very cool. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the appearance of this thing and that rather ugly plus sign. Uh, okay, well, have you tried? First, you should try clicking on the plus sign uh, and see why it's there. No, I think that's magnificent, but I mean- Okay. It, oh, it's the specific uh, appearance of the plus sign is- Yeah. Well, I just used the plus, same plus sign that we use in summary boxes. Now, if 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 design has some other plus sign to give me, I'm I'm happy to use that. <laughs> So now those angle brackets there. Mm -hmm. They're not, assuming, right? They're, they're not, not really clear. there. Yeah, I wonder if they should be gray. Um, probably, well, we, I mean, yes. Yeah, I mean, I, as an implementation matter, it's probably better to just add some opacity, right? So that yeah, okay, fine, if fine, you change fine. font color, but. Yeah, right. Okay, now in terms of this, why are you using angle brackets? Is that a standard notation for finite field elements? Uh, I couldn't find a really standard notation. And so um, people do sometimes use angle brackets in when discussing finite fields, but nothing that looks specifically like this. Um, but this seemed or maybe we need a, a different. I think that there's a little bit different c conventions. Like <clears throat> often you might just use some kind of symbol, like alpha that I used in the intro there in the finite field page. Right. And then the subscript is like which one of them. So you can tell them apart that yeah. they're two different. That, that kind it's of. It's silly because the, the alpha is kind of a waste. It absolutely is a waste. I'm just saying that that's, that's kind of a convention. And I think. No, I agree with you. We don't want that here. So that's, I'm not advocating that particularly. Yeah. Um, um, let me think. I wonder what, um, so people either use just a number Some, I, you, I mean, you kind of want the number, but you want to know it's not like a number. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, Well, what could we do here that kind of is a, because I mean, we, we don't have to have, you know, we could, what kind of decoration could we consider? Because I mean, okay, possibility. Okay, let me try this. Is that a possibility? And then with a subscript outside the frame or inside the frame or? Thinking, okay, so hold on. I admit that that's. Is 
Is that right? Superscript? No, I just need subscript. Well, you'll need superscript if you want the 503, but yes. No, I know. That's what I was going to do. Whew. Okay, here's my suggestion. Here's my suggestion. We should really get somebody from design here. Um, this isn't quite right, but something like this. With the plus sign integrated in here. Actually, I would put the plus sign on the right, right of that. No, you want it on the left because so that if you then want to close it, you don't need to move the mouse. Oh, yeah, yeah, good point. Okay. So I, then, I tried both positions and I realized my mistake. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a classic UX mistake. That's not quite right, but I mean, maybe it's uh, uh, maybe it's just me, but the angle brackets feel very mathy to me, and this doesn't feel very mathy, and so I have to say this doesn't strike me like the direction the correct direction i don't know how other people feel um where where do i put this here where do i put this anybody uh, well it, i mean if you want to put it in the lcc folder you can no i'm putting you know, it in find it okay okay I agree that it isn't, uh, okay, okay. I just don't like all the decorativeness. Okay, so here, let, let's let's try taking this thing here. Is there any way I can replace these things by a lighter gray angle bracket? Um, maybe I'll try to create something quickly and, and send it to you. Okay, I mean, maybe it is, is is there an angle bracket? Yeah, I mean, I could yeah. just do that. Okay. Okay. So, in this expression, let's say, I mean, I'll just make one of these, you know, angle bracket one one eight. Plus. Um, anybody know how to turn this into uh, let's see. Um, anybody know how to turn this into something which has some um, um, need subscripts. Yeah, I, I want to make the actual angle bracket itself. Yeah, I'm sure if I say style this thing black, and style this thing what happened? Uh, oh, there we go. I'll put second. Okay. Yeah, that font that size, I can't it. really see any color difference but <laughs> no yes you can you can because well i I, I can't see it on my screen you you're may be looking able to... at the wrong thing you're looking at the wrong thing it's the second it's the last oh one it's the this. second one yeah, yeah okay one. <laughs> this looks a lot better okay i mean that's super easy to implement and and right so you use gray level of 0.7 that's a pretty that's a pretty common 
level we use. I mean, okay, but but then and then for this subscript, mm -hmm. I think you need to integrate the plus sign into this with some kind of gray background for the whole thing or something. You can get somebody from design here. Otherwise, we we can't. Can we see if we can find maybe Jeremy again? I'll grab him. Okay. All right. We'll come back to this. Um. P is the field characteristic. Oh, it yeah, supports so it supports integers, half integer, the half yeah, integer we, case. So some elements have square roots, and some elements have, and all elements have uh, piece roots, but other roots are hard to compute. Okay, so this one here. Are you saying it's a no, 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 no? It's no, not. No, it's the power, the power oh, okay, of of okay. the element. So, so you, you take okay, the element okay, and. Okay, okay. Okay, so that that's the square root of that or whatever, p root. That will be so five five or three one. Mm -hmm. Really, the five of these roots of five is five. Oh, because it's. Try try, try, try some value. try some larger number that's not an integer. In the field, in which field? Oh, the the five. So try try some index larger than five hundred three. Index, index, not 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 the prime. Here, just tell uh, me a number. No, the ne next one, next one of yeah, make this just a large give me number. A number. One, two, three, four, something. And and oh, may uh, you use uh, five hundred three? Change that one third back to one over five hundred three. Yeah, so now it's different. Well, I don't understand why this didn't just reduce it anyway, because it's, that number is going to wrap around in the finite field, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, so, so why doesn't that reduce well, right now? Uh, well, oh, I don't the, think I don't think that's big enough, right? Because it needs to be five, five oh, bigger than five hundred three cubed. Is, is, What's five, yeah, how does that number is, compare with 503 cubed? Okay, that reduces. Yes. Okay, I get it. Okay. By the way, we do need to worry about how this looks relative to base form. Right, and one of the reasons we, I mean, we, I did have an earlier prototype with just a subscript and everybody's re first reaction was, well, that looks just like base form. And so angle brackets, still mathy, but clearly not base form. Comment from Quantum on our live stream that saying in university you sometimes had a bar above the numbers. Is that a convention you guys have seen? Three, but that maybe it will look good. I don't know. Um, I I do really think we should look some more for this. I I don't. I just it's not something I would know because I, you know, it's one of the ugly things about finite fields is what you call the elements, and you usually hope you don't have to name them. Right. <laughs> yes, people often start out with let let alpha be an element of blah and then do everything in terms of alpha. Right. So they 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 just avoid the issue, but we can't do that. Right. Jeremy, we are we are working on finite fields, numbers mod, something or other, etc. Um and uh right now we have this rather ugly creature. You with us? Yeah, I am. But I don't Oops, you're this. very, very, very faint. Oh, you're there we go. Here. Yeah. Um. Okay. So we're planning to at least we don't know whether the angle brackets are the right notation. What is this? I mean, it's a f number in a finite field, so it's a number like clock arithmetic, like mod twelve okay. or something. Yeah. Um, in this particular case, mod 503 to the third power. 
Okay. Um, and why is that plus O? Oh. Boy, so it has a nested. Okay. All right. So what we've been proposing down here is just to gray down the brackets. Although, let me just. Um, Well, now let's put the subscript in there. Are they likely to be the same base in a given equation? Yeah, like that? Yes. Okay. They will have to be the same base. Okay. Right, is that a true statement, guys, that they'd never be not in the same base? Yeah, correct. Yes. Be, if it's supposed to be useful. In fact, I'm not even sure if we support the same base but different representations. But uh, we convert them automatically if you try to do something with it. Okay. But... And I, I've got the sorting wrong here, but that's okay. Now the question is: Is that enough? I mean, that that looks a lot better than. You know, we can go slightly still looking reasonable. The black is not looking so reasonable. Now this here, we could go oops. Yeah. Oh, style. That looks kind of terrible. Yeah. Um, and we've also got to get that plus sign in there somehow. Um, that's absolutely invisible. Why is it so invisible? Maybe because there's something. Well, the plus sign could be bigger. And that whole thing could be clickable, right? Um, I mean, I, I'd rather not do that because then you can't access any of the pieces in there if you, if right, if you want to just okay. copy out the base. But it is very redundant that we're having to repeat. I mean, I think this looks really ugly with all the pluses there. And I'm, I'm worried that it, it suggests addition, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, if we had the whole thing be clickable, then, then Etai's complaint about moving your mouse if you click it twice wouldn't be an issue anymore. That's true. Um, what about the double, double chevron? That's the opener, cell opener, inline cell opener. Where would you put it? It'd be at the end. That'd be fine. I mean, a small one of those would be a fine. Just a shame that the, these are so repetitive. And... Yeah, I mean, okay. Is there any other notation and any other kind of wrapping, if we're going to wrap these numbers in something, this is deemed not mathy enough. So let's just see. Um, let's see.
Um, There's no weird thing with these, for example. Let's look at ours. Boy, what's going on with pallets in this prototype build? Just crazy. By the way, I, jumping back to the chevron idea, I think it would be better to put the chevron on the left and make it a down chevron like we do with code assist. Um, okay. Okay, let's take a look at our bracket choices here. Um, where are our brackets? They're gonna, yeah, okay, there they are. Right, so obviously some of those right floor ceiling are not usable. No, not a full <laughs> floor ceiling, but a, but a, a, a short floor ceiling would be usable at the bottom of the number. At the bottom of the number, like something like this, just sit I see. underneath the two sides of the number. That will be usable. Mm-hmm. Um, not sure what else from there is usable. Yeah, those are all binary operators. Those that's one not going to be useful. Two three zero e. What? Why isn't this? Oh, that's incredibly ugly. In this font, it's it's a broken. Yeah, it may not. Uh, the do show cell expression. Why is this so slow? Something is really, really broken in this front end. Well, okay, maybe maybe if is I it... zoomed in, maybe maybe that's what it actually is here. Yeah, I think it is what it actually is here. That's not what I thought it was. Okay. And I'll, can you do show cell expression on that uh, cell? Right, so it doesn't have a long name, which means it's pulling in whatever system font it can find this in rather that's than using one expect. of our fonts. Yeah, that's what I would expect. What do we want to communicate in a, you know, a finite field? What's its visual, what, what visual metaphor? I mean, other than an alpha, which is used for these things. What's the right visual thing to communicate for these? Given that they all have to have the stupid subscript. And I assume the subscript is the right place to put that. I think so. Uh, I think I think right. I mean, it is. Um, yeah, I, th that is. I think pretty standard. Yeah. Um, I mean, off right. Obviously, it'll often just be in textbooks, just the P, right? But it'll. I mean, often you set it up in context and you don't show it. Um, well, for for sure, we should go down to smaller font font size for that subscript. Okay. And I don't know whether that background is helping or hurting. It's probably hurting. Let's get rid of that background. 
Well, it helps that the gray plus sign isn't, oh, it's gone now. Yeah, if that was a down chevron, I think it'd look decent. Okay, look, what would that be to make a down chevron? Is it called uh, down chevron? Boy, I really wish John were here so he could tell me the secret code to get the actual official code assist down chevron, <laughs> but... Uh, um... It's looking okay. Looked a lot better than it did before. I mean, obviously, we we. I think it's reasonable. Now, is it going to have a mouse over that says finite field element, blah, blah, blah? It should, presumably. You mean the whole thing or? Yeah, I'm thinking the yes, whole yes. thing. Yes, yes. OK. All right, but we can come up with no better visual metaphor than the angle brackets. Roger, anybody? The only thing that I was thinking of whether one always need to subs, you know, to know what field it's in, or that's a mouse over thing. Mm. I think we should put it in, but just have it be small. I think we'll survive putting it in there. I mean, but we we, we do need to elide it quite quickly. If it's more than four characters long, we probably need to elide it. Okay. Even three characters. I mean, you know, you know, you really care about the field. Uh, uh, here's a question: If it's an elided thing, do we want to have a character at the beginning, dot dot dot, a character at the end? Is it useful to know? Something? What 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 the what I've done is once it grows beyond, and I think my limit is much higher, like twenty. But um, you know, it just says p, you know, p to the k. And then if you want to see the details, you click the plus sign and you have the full finite field element, full finite field object there that you can get any information. I would put dot of. dots there. I would not go to Pete the K. I think that's very bizarre because there'll be a lot of other Ks that somebody has. And you have no idea that your K isn't, you know, killing another K, so to speak, conceptually, so to speak. Yeah, actually, all right. I think the K is always stays uh, stays the actual number. We don't expect a lot yeah, of exponents I, there, right? So, yes. so, so the P the, the P stays, uh, you know, becomes becomes simple P, but it shouldn't, because there might be a P in your expression. It's really not a good idea. You okay. Just give the damn number and and you know with dot dot dots. Now my only question to you guys is: Is it useful to see beginning and end? Is the end potentially useful because it might tell you something about? I mean, clearly it's never an even number. Do anything you could easily tell by by the end. Right? Yeah, I mean, with, with large primes, no, there's nothing you can tell. I, I know. Good. I suppose I should defer to Adam, but as far as I know, there's nothing you can tell by the last few digits of a large prime. <laughs> well, it's whether it's in the form six n plus one or six n minus one, right? Not really. I, I I mean, you know, the the regular short with 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 few first digits, few last digits, and and the number of digits missing, it's informative since you see the size of the of the number. Right. Well, I think if we give the number of digits missing, we're going to get super confused. I think we should just give, you know, a couple of digits at the beginning. Dot dot. Well, if you don't think the digits at the end are useful, then we should just give a, a you know, a couple of two or three digits at the beginning. Okay. Um. Okay, do we have anything else to discuss? I mean, again, I'm not thrilled with the fact that we don't have a notation for finite fields that is, you know, that's somehow more suggestive. Because we're we're, you know, we've we've had a we've done a good job over the years of inventing notations that are suggestive for things. And this seems like a bit of a wimp out that we're not coming up with anything here. I mean, I think I have seen angle brackets for some in the past, 
Um, well, well, the good thing is that the styling is almost entirely in the style sheet. So if we come up with something better later, we can always update the. <laughs> yeah, I know, but but we don't want to. Um, Okay. All right. Well, lovely. So I think that's everything we needed Jeremy for. Yeah. That's okay. that guy. Yeah. I'm going to have to leave, unfortunately. Okay. Well, then we'll have to schedule some more. Yeah. Um, I think we need one more round on this. Maybe an hour or fine. maybe less. Oh, wow. Solve works for this? Uh, not yet. But not yet. Sure. <laughs> next release. It's, 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 next release, yes. And and the way you'll specify the field is what in solve. Uh so instead of reels or and complexes, you, you you say you give the field. The finite field. Yeah, you, you give the, the, factor, the specific finite you field. Give, what do you do for factor? Do you say extension? uh so it's I either the field field of coefficients or extension goes to F. How do you specify the the, the field elements? In... Oh, if, if the coefficients in in, in the polynomial oh, are see. from some some field, you use the field. But th this isn't an extension, so right? No, I understand. Well, if if you do integer coefficients and and then put extension goes to f, that that also works and it's it's sort of useful. You you can, you know, you consider those int integers as as elements of the field and and factor over this field. Does it have reasonable messages when you combine finite field elements with with plain integers? Does it? Does it? So if you combine with plain methods? integers, it's it, ju it just includes the integers in the field without a message. If you combine with something you cannot include them in the field, then it gives an error message. How do you? Uh, sorry, this is a naive question, but how do you combine? I mean, in something that isn't just, you know, GFP, how do you combine the integer into the field? Uh, so the the integer you take it modulo p and 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 uh, oh well, that's fine if it, the field zp is inside. Is, so you take it mod p to the q or something. No, you you take it mod p, and then in, include in the field the field every every finite field contains uniquely a copy of zp. So so the integers are considered elements of zp. Okay, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. And so if, it, if it's, but if it, the field was P to the Q, it would have more copies of that, but you just put this into the canonical first, first one. Is that correct? First one. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So it's, or, or it's just integer times, times the one in the field. Right. Right. So I have a question here, which is, I mean, in terms of other more exotic functions, like, um, you know, uh, primitive, like the things for, for shift register sequences, which are very finite fieldy. Um, I mean, presumably, and it's a nice example, you can, you can show with, with GF2, you can show a nice fractal. How do I do this? Let me just do this. So I say finite field two, except it has to be two comma one. And then I want X plus one like this. And then I want to take that to the power T. And I want to take the expand of that. And I want to do a coefficient list, which presumably will work. that and then I, oops comma x oh what the hell is this doing? okay table t comma 20. why is this taking on to real time okay let me, let me make now a um why is that Lovely. Well, if it, if it didn't, if it lined up properly, actually, if I want to make a grid here, 
Can I make a grid? I don't know if I can make a grid. Yeah, isn't that lovely? There's a cute example for you. That's a very nice, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, great. Could you send it code to us somehow? For... Yeah. I mean, you can do it with other Modulae and other. That's very nice. Thanks. I recommend also. Well, let's see what would happen if I tried to do it. Um, one over x plus x times that. Does that work? No. Well, coefficient lists like doesn't like the denominators. Denominators. I see. But now this. Uh, Why is that not? That's not as beautiful as it could be. Well, anyway, that looks beautiful if you render it correctly. Um, okay. So, okay, well, So all of these things, what about GCD? Does GCD make any sense? What about other number theoretic functions? Uh, so GCD LCM, that it's a field, so, 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 yeah. so it doesn't make sense, yeah, uh, other. Aren't there things with Mobius functions and so on that makes, uh, what, about, what about the Dirichlet thingy dingies? Don't they have, don't they make sense? Like Zeta functions with, you know, Dirichlet functions with Dirichlet character, you know, the characters in the Dirichlet series. Aren't they finite field thingies? Can't you have L series over finite fields? Hmm. If I remember correctly, right? I mean, do you know that to be nonsense or do you not know either way? I don't know either way. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm pretty sure you can, because I'm pretty sure, remember the definition of an L function has that, that the character thing in the L, in the L function definition. Right. And I'm pretty sure that, you know, it's minus one, whatever. Yeah. I think it's, I think it makes sense. I think you should ask. Um, Charles. Probably Charles. Yeah. Yeah. I think you should go on a hunt for some other. Um, I'm trying to think whether there's the solid automaton function, whether there's things there. Okay, here we go. Yeah. I, I'm pretty certain that this is a way. Chi of n is a is a Dirichlet character. Yeah, modulo k. The possible Dirichlet characters modulo k are specified by an index. Blah blah blah. I'm pretty sure this is highly related. I I don't know for sure, but, but it, it looks related. Um. What other number theory functions are relevant to this? I'm not sure it's related, but there's these uh, elliptic, hyperelliptic curves which are being studied over finite fields. So I think I'm. Oh, yeah, that that's I, right. I mean, the discrete yeah, logarithm. That can, I mean, that's kind of. I've, I know the literature that it's passed on to Adam at some point. Okay. But what about just, what about integer factorization? Does that make any sense in a finite field? Uh, no, again, it's, a it's a field, so so you, you don't have you don't have uh, all, all elements are in invertible, so so you don't have factorization there. Right. Um, integer digits doesn't make any sense. Primitive root. What exactly is primitive? That that might be something that that. Yeah, primitive root must make sense. It must make sense. It's the same creature, isn't it? Yeah. 
A modular yeah. inverse surely makes sense, doesn't it? Power mod, obviously. Well, power mod, the oh, yeah, third argument just... of power mod, probably. Okay, here's a question. Is mod capable of taking as a second argument some kind of field? Uh, what would it do? It would reduce the thing and that well, I, it would reduce it. Just, to... just put, 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 the, put the integer in the field or? Yeah, what you, what you just explained was, was the thing you were doing. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, then it then it's good. I'm, I mean, I don't, I don't know that it makes sense, but I'm just suggesting that might be useful. Uh, yeah, at least for integers, it's you know, mod mod works for for complex numbers, and I think it's not an not a rational number would would yeah, not okay. make well, sense. Maybe it's not a good idea. I don't know. Um. All right. Uh, well, fine. This is looking great. I mean, and and then linear algebra, you say, is coming. Is coming here. And okay, well, next time we've got a small amount to do here. I don't think this is probably not. Oh boy, uh, this is going to be a mess. Is this real? The structure matrices thing? Is this a big? Is this yeah. a big build out? No, no, no. It's just something you requested. This target structure where you know you can request a particular kind of output, either dense or structured or sparse. It's, I think you request like maybe probably last release and we've done it now. That's all. Okay. So is this a it's... substantial build out or is this? Well, we've had, there are several new structured matrix types. I mean, it's not. Oh, okay, fine. Yeah. Right. Let's pick this up next time. Sure. And, um, also, while we're at it, look at the new formatting of finite fields and um, otherwise looking good. Thanks. Good stuff. Well, well done. Talk Thank to you. you all soon.